Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, Officers of the Indian Civil Accounts Organization, and President Secretary, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Sir, today it is indeed a privileged and proud moment for Indian Civil Accounts Service young professionals who have had the opportunity to call on you. Professionals of 2012 and 2013 batches are here. They have completed their 15 weeks training at foundation course. After the foundation course, they'll be attached with National Institute of Financial Management for 44 weeks training in Faridabad with all other professionals of various accounting services. During this period, they'll be trained in accountancy, public financial management, data management, data analysis, and public policy also. They'll be taken abroad for a foreign country exposure also, sir. After completion of an IFM training, they report to Academy of Indian Civil Accounts Organization at Old JNU campus, known as Institute of Government Accounts and Finance in New Delhi for 35 weeks. During the course of their training, these professionals will be sensitized to working of the sale accounts organization through case studies, training films, and other field attachments with various pay accounts offices <coughs> and other organizations of the government of India. Honorable Sir, under Article 283 and 150 of the Constitution of India, Control General of Accounts helps in finalization of forms and content of the accounts of the government of India. It also helps government of India in management of its cash and debt, and it provides help in making the budget estimates of the finance ministry. Government of India gets the support from CGA as on treasury advices, and it compiles appropriation accounts and finance accounts also. Last month, Government of India had also approved a public financial management system, which was initiated five years back by Ministry of Finance. And this is a program of planning commission implemented by Office of the CGA, where our young professionals of 2012 batches will be completing their probation. They'll also be party to implement the program of monitoring of the plan schemes expenditure and giving information to government of India. Honorable sir, we are indeed privileged and aware that your keen interest in institution building and your vision for self-sufficient and equitable and vibrant India. You are the guiding force for all of us in our endeavor to make civil accounts organization one of the efficient organization in execution of our financial systems, strengthening transparency in our operation, and introducing reforms for better governments. Sir, the system which you have initiated as Honorable Finance Minister, we are proud to tell you that we have achieved up to 90% success in GPG and e-payment systems, which was initiated by Honorable Sir. I am indeed privileged that to you, sir, that you have spared your valuable time for today's interaction with the ICS professionals and other ICS officers. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Honorable President of India, the Controller General of Accounts Government of India, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor and privilege for us to be present here today. We have completed almost three months of a professional training at the National Institute of Financial Management in Faridabad. I would like to give you all a brief glimpse into our experiences so far. Manushivati Bhumi Ratha 
the motto of our institute made us realize the importance of human spirit in bringing closer the, hum the serenity of nature and true human wealth. Apart from training us in financial management, accounting, public financial administration, microeconomics, macroeconomics, and so on, our institute has given us a splendid opportunity to rejoice in the company of nature. To sum up the beautiful journey we've had so far, I would like to quote Oscar Wilde here. We can have in life but one great experience at best, and the secret of life is to reproduce that experience as often as possible. On this glorious occasion, we promise to live up to the expectation of this great nation and fulfill the dream of Sarva Bhavantu Sukhina. Jai Hind, thank you. Honorable President of India, respected Controller General of Accounts, ladies and gentlemen, so, as my colleague said, the training at National Institute of Financial Management gave us a wide variety of exposure to the national and international best practices in public financial management, including visit to University of California as well as Federal Reserve of United States. As a second part of our professional training at Institute of Government Accounts and Finance, we have visited various central ministries and offices across the country to understand the practical challenges of public finance and accounting which we face today. In this journey, we, re we realized that we need to work with integrity, excellence, and dedication in the service of India and the humanity at large. So today we assure you of our commitment to ensure usage of public money in a fair, equitable, transparent, and accountable manner. So today we also promise you, sir, we will live up to the people's expectations. Thank you, Jahind. Yeah, Mare. Sri Jahar Thakur, Controller General of Accounts, Sri Deepak Das, Director, Institute of Government Accounts and Finance, Officer Trainees of Indian Civil Accounts Services, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen. At the very outset, I would like to welcome you to Rashtrapati Bhavan, this magnificent building which has witnessed many important events in our national history in contemporary period. This building was contemplated to be constructed in the early part of the last century when the capital was transferred from Calcutta to Delhi in 1911. But as the building could have been completed earlier, but in the intervening period, there was the First World War between 1914 to 1918 and therefore the construction was delayed. This building, after being constructed in the post-First World War era, when the British imperial power was at its zenith, practically British controlled the entire sea route from Europe to Asia and large part of Africa. Therefore, their design was to construct this building in the most magnificent way, but maybe the quirk in history that after the construction and the first occupant, Lord Arwin, came as Governor General and Viceroy of India in 1931, they stayed only 16 years. After that, 1947, till May 48, Lord Mountbatten was the Governor General but in that half, from 47 August to 1948, May, when he departed, he was not the Governor-General appointed by the Queen. 
he was the governor general of independent india and thereafter one indian governor general a great national leader rajagopal achari took over and from 26 january 1950 we declared ourselves as republic and the constitution which was adopted it was not made by anybody from 1757 till 1947 190 years all the laws for india were made by britishers british parliament or through the decrees of royalty but this is the piece of legislation and constitution which people of india they are chosen representatives drafted for almost over 3 years and gave to themselves that's why the constitution starts from we the people of india i am happy to welcome you young professionals who are just entering into the government service in a very important department accounts department to serve for the remaining 35 40 years till you retire i would also like to congratulate you for successfully passing the most difficult one of the most difficult competitive examinations it is not easy for an ordinary student to get through the indian civil service examinations it speaks of the successful candidates their merit and academic performance i congratulate you and i wish you all success in your future endeavor you will also get this opportunity to serve the people of this great country because except in government through the public service no organization can serve so many people for such a long period of time therefore you are fortunate to have this opportunity of course which you have earned on your merit i remember as i was the minister of state in the ministry of finance in those days when audit and accounts were separated talks were going on for quite some time and the service which you have entered now that was created in 1976 separating the audit part from accounting part this was a long demand and it was considered as a progressive measure and major reforms in the auditing and accounting system which was achieved in 1976 see subramaniam was the finance minister and i had the privilege of piloting this bill in one of the house of parliament as the then minister of state revenue and expenditure revenue and banking i am happy to note that the system has worked well the civil accounts organizations has over the years progressed in the right direction and has developed systems not only to keep pace with the developments in information and communication technology but also to fulfill the aspirations of the large number of common people dear officer trainees your service has rightly chosen its motto kosho purba samarambha from or kautilya's art shastra a strong and well managed treasury 
function is the base for all kind of planning in governance and development and also the outcome of good governance. Today there is a rising expectation among the people for greater efficiency in delivery system. To address these concerns, it is imperative for government departments to <coughs> modernize their systems and make them citizen-centric. I am indeed happy that the reforms which this organization has introduced are in the correct direction. Use of modern IC tools is the key for all government agencies to achieve higher efficiency and make optimum use of the available human resources. I am told that Civil Accounts Organization was one of the first organizations in India to have started using computers in the government business initially. I had an opportunity to inaugurate the government e-payment gateway developed by the Civil Accounts Organization, which Mr. Thakur has referred to, on October 31, 2011, in my capacity as Finance Minister. I had the privilege of serving as a Minister of Finance in 70s, 80s, and before moving to this building, for three years from 2009 to 2012. The idea behind developing an e-payment system was to eliminate beneficiary dependence on government offices and officials and instead directly credit funds into their accounts. I am told that with this initiative, the payment life cycle has shrunk thereby improving the system's efficiency. Availability of timely and relevant financial and accounting data is another critical requirement of the government for better planning and management of our finances and budget. Civil Accounts Organization plays an important role in this through the timely preservations of the union finance and appropriation accounts in Parliament. The Civil Accounts Organization is also responsible for the internal audit functions in civil ministries and departments. As internal auditors, you help the ministries and departments accomplish their objectives by bringing a systematic and disciplined approach to risk management, risk mitigation, internal control, and governance process. Your organization is also responsible for management, disbursement, and accounting of pension payments to government employees of all civil ministries, all India officers, and freedom fighters through the Central Pension Accounting Office, this is an onerous responsibility that your service is entrusted with. Human resources are the most official component of all change management efforts, especially so when it comes to IT-based efforts. I am happy to note that CGA's organization truly values its human resources and is genuinely working towards engaging its employees in such reforms through its training institute, that is, Institute of Government Accounts and Finance. I am told that INGAF, apart from taking care of training needs of the civil accounts organizations, are organizing training programs in public financial management for state governments, bank, public sector enterprises, 
and autonomous bodies, other stakeholders of the government. INGAF as the Secretariat of the Association of Government Accounts Organization of Asia, AGAOA, also plays an important role in regional cooperation as well. With these words, I welcome you once again and I would wish that you contribute in the service to which you are just entering into. I hope each one of you today stand on the threshold of a promoting, promising career and I have no doubt you will live up to the ideas, challenges and expectations of the people of this great country. With these words, I thank you once again and welcome to Rashtrapati Bhavan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind. Honorable President of India, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks for today's engagement. At the outset, I, on behalf of the Controller General of Accounts, Provisioners of the Indian Civil Accounts Service and my colleagues from the Civil Accounts Organization would like to express my profound gratitude to the Honorable President for sparing his valuable time to meet the probationers and address them. We deeply value your advice and assure you, sir, of our abiding commitment to the objectives of the Civil Accounts Organization. We also resolve to fulfill them with all sincerity and dedication. I would be failing in my duty if I do not convey my thanks to all the officials of this Secretariat for their cooperation and assistance in organizing the visit. We greatly appreciate it. Lastly, I thank all the probationers and my colleagues present here for their unstinted cooperation. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you.